Thank you. Please remain standing as the Central Dragon Band plays our national anthem. Here with the head coach of the Central Dragons, that of course is Dave Baker and Coach 
go back to last week and how much of a tone you can set for a football game at the beginning of the game. And your first play from scrimmage, Jeff Hohenstein takes the ball 43 yards right into the end zone. And that really set the tone for the rest of that game. Yes, obviously it did. And obviously uh, he exploded up through the middle and ran very hard and had very good blocking. So that pretty much had uh, uh, put them back on their heels and made it tough for them. Yeah, and that, when you can do that right off the bat, that's a, a big part of having success because it gets the your opposition into a completely different mindset. One of the things that is missing from your team is Cade Rule on returns, on punt returns, but you have such a deep roster of talented athletes that, uh, and I'm not saying you wouldn't want to love to have Cade back, but you did have the personnel you needed to fill in in that spot. Yeah, we can, uh, Elijah Ligenfelder and uh, Jacob Benton can uh, very well uh, kick returns. And Cade, we hope, we think he'll be back next week if we make next week. Yeah, and it's this is definitely one week at a time here. This is a team that uh, gave you the second closest game that you played this year. Chestnut Ridge was the first game of the year. That was the closest. Then this by one point was uh, was one point less close, but it meant that they gave you a pretty good game. The one thing I remember about this game, uh, which was at Central, was the fact that you kind of set the tone in that game and uh, now they did try to put a rush on in the second half. They got Swain even more, if it's possible, involved in the offense. And they did have a much better second half than they had a first half. But I think, once again, you guys had established yourselves in the first half of the game. Yes, uh, but they did play very well in the second half. They ran the ball well, and Swain and the fullback uh, made drive and to score two touchdowns at the end of the game. And we were concerned with that because we had, uh, that night, we did not have an answer for that. Now, we hope we have the answer this week, but we will have to see here. Yeah, one of the things that I did notice about them and, you know, one of the things that really caught my attention at the beginning of the season is the amount of athletes you have on your team and dressed week after week. And Bedford doesn't nearly have that many guys out there dressed week after week. And depending on how they're played during the game, there there can be a wear factor on Bedford just because of the guys really having to work a little bit harder. Well, I I think that can be the case, but uh, I think they have enough to play uh, an entire game with themselves. They certainly are not lacking in good players. They, They have a lot of good players. Hey, what can go on here? You know, it's a cold night, and uh, it's kind of night you bundle up. What can happen here physically to the players that may not happen during a, you know, maybe a 50-degree night or even a 40-degree night? We're in the 30s here tonight, and we'll be below freezing probably by the end of the game for sure. What kind of a difference does that make for the athletes themselves? Well, I think once they get warmed up and once they start playing, as long as it's dry and not real windy, uh, they will warm up. Everybody says how cold it is, but when you're playing, they do not notice it very much. All right. Well, let's hope that is the case, that they don't notice it at all, and you get something right out of the gate, your first offensive possession, and kind of set the tone for this game like you did last week, and hopefully we will be talking again next Friday. Good luck tonight, Coach. Thank you. That's what we're hoping to do, but... Uh, the game will take care of itself. All right. We'll be back with more after this on Mix 94.7. Farming demands well-built equipment, Kubota equipment that's proven for over a century, tractors that are adaptable and versatile, hay tools backed by a two-year warranty, sidekick utility vehicles where durability meets speed, and productive SSV skid steers. Visit your local Kubota dealer for a demo today. McCoy's Lawn and Garden, Route 36 Roaring Spring, your local Kubota dealer. 
Hi, I'm Scott Horvath Jr. with Horvath Chemical and Supply. And are you looking to extend the life and appearance of your vehicle? At Horvath Chemical and Supply, we have quality products to make your ATV, car, truck, RV, or boat spotless. We have hundreds of interior or exterior items for your vehicle, including cleaners, degreasers, vehicle care products, and sanitizing supplies. We have been in the business for many years and our family is here to help. We are the one-stop shop for your vehicle. If we don't have it, you don't need it. Shop local and visit us today at Horvath Chemical in Roaring Springs. Stop in today and see all the retail product you can buy. When it comes to hardware, you want to go to a store that's experienced, a store that has built trust in the community over a period of time. That's Roaring Spring True Value. Roaring Spring True Value has been serving the community for 158 years. Whether it's plumbing, electrical, lawn and garden needs, or a huge selection of paint with color matching, or if you need high-tech keys and remotes, the knowledgeable staff at Roaring Spring True Value can get the job done right. Roaring Spring True Value, supplying your home since 1863. Hey, y'all, let me tell you about my buddy Earl. He fancies himself as a great handyman, a real do-it-yourself kind of guy. Problem is, Earl gets himself in a bind way too often, so I always end up taking him down to Long's Outpost to get the right tools for any project. Long's Outpost not only has tools and building supplies, but lots of toys for us good old boys. Stuff for hunting, fishing, and camping. And they have two locations, 3936 Cove Mountain Road in Martinsburg and 1654 Dunnings Creek Road in New Paris. Well, sounds like Earl's at it again. Time to get to Long's Outpost. Dragon's Den Pizza Route 36 Roaring Spring across from Giant Eagle is ready for football season. And if you can't watch the game, make the best of it while listening with a delicious spread from Dragon's Den Pizza. Call 814-224-7992. That's 814-224-7992. And have your own high school football tailgating party while you cheer on the home team. Open Monday through Saturday, 11 to 8. Sunday, noon to 8. Call ahead for fast service. 814-224-7992. Dragon's Den Pizza. Located in the center of Dragon Nation. When the leaves change color, it is a beautiful time of the year until they hit the ground. Your ground. Good thing West Central has John Deere tractor packages starting at $156 per month. They can handle chores year-round, leaf collection, snow removal, move firewood, whatever. West Central also has John Deere compact construction equipment. Visit one of their five locations or westcentraleq.com. Offer ends October 31st. Some restrictions apply. See dealer for details. This is Mix 94.7 WBRX Crescent Altoona, a service of Lightner Communications. Welcome back to Holidaysburg High School, where the Central Dragons are about to take on the Bedford Bison. Lou, they had a coin toss out there. What can you tell me? Bedford won the toss, and they deferred, so they're going to put the ball in Central's hands to start tonight's contest. Okay, that can be sometimes risky at best, and we'll see how that <laughs> plays out early on. We can only hope for a repeat of what happened last week, and it doesn't necessarily have to be Jeff, as in Hohenstein. That could also come from someone uh, on the order of a Parker Gregg on a handoff as well. Maybe we could get to see a SWAT somewhere along the way. Yeah, he perfected that during the season, that get out of my way swat and uh, you know he's big enough to do that yeah he is and and you back that up with his compadre mr smith who runs just as hard and just as well yeah now on the roster uh hunter smith is listed at 6 2 207 and uh, parker is listed at 6 foot 212 i think hunter uh maybe on weight is definitely a little bigger than that 207 Right now, he is an imposing young man out there in the field. Yeah, those were August uh, stats sure. and, and weights and heights and such. So I know they've been in the in the weight room and a lot has happened. So we're almost ready for the kick. And here come the Central Scarlet Dragons. All right. Well, looking back to receive before the Dragons, we have Jake Benton back there and back there with him. I think, is that a Eli Lingenfelder? No, it is not. Well, the kick is away. And that was actually Josh Biesinger there that was the other guy back deep, and it got kicked in his direction, but just a little bit too hard and went right out of bounds. So a break for the Dragons right off the bat as they'll get the ball after the penalty is assessed for kicking the ball out of bounds. Yeah, they'll start on their 35-yard line with the first series here, and uh, we'll see what Coach dials up here. Now, this is, you know, sometimes you hear the illegal procedure term belted out there, and in this case, that is illegal procedure when you kick the ball out of bounds. 
when it is the offensive line moving too early, it is the false start. All right. First down and 10. Hohenstein hands the ball off to Parker Gregg. Bounces outside to the right, and Bedford was ready for it. They had three defenders over there and eventually took Parker out of bounds for no gain. It'll be a second down and 10. Cooper Lingenfelder, defensive tackle, six foot two twenty-five on the tackle for the Bison. So it is second down and 10 on a brisk night in Hollidaysburg and everywhere else in central Pennsylvania, for that matter. At least we don't have the amount of snow on the ground that they have in Edinburgh, PA, which I was nearby yesterday, and that's why I left. Uh, <laughs> Owen Stein in the gun, and we had some jet sweep motion and whistle blew. Eli Lingenfelder was running that jet sweep, and the whistle blew shortly after he took off in that motion, and it is a false start. Against Central, a five-yard penalty to take it back to make it second down and 15 now. Yeah, a little wiggle up there, offensive line, and he might have had a step quick before he was set. So, You know, they did actually mark uh, some forward progress for Parker Gregg on that first carry, so it's actually second and 14, as you may have heard over the PA system. When the officials were first lining up, it looked like they were – Going to make that a no gain, and there you go as Bedford responds to a false start with encroachment. It's going to be Zach Vent, number 75. He's a defensive tackle. He just the... leaned into that a little too hard. So now we go right back to where we are, and the leather bunny has begun its nightly jump. Trading those five-yard penalties to start the opening contest here. Makes it second down and nine now. So as they say, all things being equal, we're back where we are or were, that is, just moments ago. Lingenfelder in motion. There's a hard pass over toward the sideline for Devin Boyles from Jeff Hohenstein and thrown a little bit too hard, and it goes out of bounds, incomplete, and brings up a third down and nine, so a little bit of a sputter here out of the gate for the Dragons. Yeah, a little pressure there, first series of the night, and, you know, you got to get your uh, your football legs back together and your head in the game, as they say. Here come Hohenstein and the Dragons. All right, it's going to be Hunter Smith back there to potentially run or maybe just to protect Hohenstein. He's protecting him. Jeff lets it go, and he throws to where Eli Lingenfelder was, which fortunately there were no Bedford players in that immediate vicinity in between Lingenfelder and Bite, or Biesinger, rather, and it ends up just harmlessly follow, falling on the turf. So that brings up a fourth down, fourth and nine. And a punt coming up from Hunter Smith. Yeah, Hunter's done a good job this year on his punts. Get that average up there. Send an Iker out to punt, so it will be Ethan to go ahead. and Iker's averaging just under 33 yards a punt. Gets it away. It's a nice kick. And it's going to hit. At the 35 of Bedford and roll out of bounds at the 30. So gets five more after it touches the turf. No attempt at a run back. So the Bison have the ball first and 10 at their own 30 with no score in the football game in the first quarter and 10-24 left to go in it. This is a big series for Bedford to come out strong here because, as you remember, they started the last contest against Central very, very erratically. And... That was an odd little sequence of events there with the with the encroachment preceded by the false start in the central possession. Just seemed a little bit out of sync there. Both teams, for that matter. Mercury Swain, Mr. Everything. Back there, quarterback in the shotgun. Takes a snap, goes back about a step and a half, starts to run forward, and is met immediately and dropped to the Holidaysburg turf. Dominic Wagner on the stop for Central, defensive lineman. Boyle's in there with the assist as well from the defensive end position. I'll tell you what, we had a guy from Bishop Guilfoyle that we called the pterodactyl. Devin, in his own way, is kind of a pterodactyl out there. He sure is. He's a big boy, 6'5", and a big old wingspan. Yes, does he have that wingspan. Now up under center this time is Mercury Swain with a second down and 13. 
hands the ball off, and the run goes up the middle. Carrying the ball that time was Trenton Price. Yeah, Price is averaging about seven yards a touch for the Bison coming into tonight's contest. He's the big fullback, 5'11", 190 out of the backfield. It's actually some uh, weight to be throwing around there. You say he's averaging seven yards a carry. Seven yards a carry. That is kind of outrageous when you come right down to it. He's a pretty big statured young man. So that'll uh, take us to third down and seven. The ball at the 33-yard line of Bedford. Their first possession of the night. Central has had the ball once, unable to do anything but a three and out. Swain rolling to his left, making his right. Looks downfield, throws a pass toward the Bedford sideline, and it was Kevin Ressler, the intended receiver, but the defense was even better by Central. Eli Lingenfelder, number 22 on that defensive coverage. He's a junior, stands six feet tall, and he was all over that defensive play. Now, knowing what these two teams can do, Lou, could we possibly end up with maybe a defensive struggle here tonight? Well, I think it'll loosen up as soon as they get their, their legs on both sides. First series out of the way, here comes Bedford with a punt, Central to receive. Both teams with three and outs. Swain boots it away toward the sideline. Lingenfelder does take a fair catch. Actually, he kind of hooked that right back onto the hash marks. He did. And uh, he got it right there at the 37-yard line. So that's actually a little better field position than when Central had to punt the ball away. So we'll see what they're able to do here with their second possession of the night and see if the play selection changes that much for the Dragons. Yeah, Swaim averaging just under 37 yards a kick and had a nice kick there and their first possession. All right, everything looking pretty much normal here for Central as they get set up with Hohenstein and the pistol moving up beside him to his right is Parker Gregg. Hohenstein fakes the little bit of a pump fake there and then through for Devin Boyles, a little bit of a late bump by the defender on the play. That was Maxwell Washington. Yeah, Jeff pressing a little bit. That was a little high thrown, and it, he's got a lot of zip on that. So that was definitely not a He always pass. does. I mean, <laughs> you and I have walked by them when they're warming up at the beginning of the game, and, man, a, a, that's a football that's coming at you that a, at a real severe speed. And yeah, that's a big target out there in number five, Boyle, 6'5", and then some. you got to make sure you're getting your hands on the football, and it may sting a lot, but if it hits your shoulder pads, it's going to ricochet about 15 feet in the air. Hand off to Hunter Smith. Hunter gets out to the 40, leans forward out to the 42. That lean was pretty handy, and we're going to get an NCAA kind of spot there as they move it out to the 43. They need to get to the 47 for a first down, so it'll be third and four. That's a good north and south run because yeah. once he gets that momentum, he's not going to be brought down by an arm tackle. He's going to be need to be brought down by multiple defenders. Third down and four. We'll see what the Dragons bring on a critical third down. I'm sure they would like to score on this possession. Wide receiver now to the left is Hunter Smith. Hohenstein throws it across the middle and behind Eli Lingenfelder. Eli could not get spun around to get a handle on that one. And fortunately, once again, the ball falls incomplete. Bedford's defenders weren't really that close, but you hate to see those passes that go behind the guy. Yeah, they're giving a lot of cushion defensively to yes. the central receivers. And Rightfully so. Know, and, and Jeff's a little bit more pressing tonight than we've seen him. So, again, it's playoff atmosphere, and, and you know, they're going to get the nerves out, so nothing hurt on that exchange all right it'll be fourth down and four and in the punt for the dragon ethan Iker. Iker gets it away and be a short boot yep goes out of bounds pretty early and some might say that was shanked a little bit goes out at the 43 yard line of bedford so that's where the bison have it first and ten and they benefit from the change of possession as they're out at the 43 now. So both teams went three and out. Central got better position, unable to take it any further. And now they kicked away to Bedford. Now Bedford has bettered their field position in that exchange. 7.53 left to go in the first quarter. No score in the game. Under center that time, Mercury Swain with a handoff. 
And that's a pretty nice run considering the defense that Central had there with Trenton Price carrying the football and getting out over the 45 to the 46. A gain of three and a second and seven. Josh Wade on the bottom of that pile for Central. And Central had seven men on the line and had their linebackers up. So they're looking to shut that inside run game down. And I think they're expecting that that's going to be something that Bedford will lean on. Now that formation is even tighter for the Bison on second down at seven. There's a handoff again, and once again it goes to Trenton Price. And Price is, after he gets about a yard, is knocked back to the feet of Mercury Swain. Devin Boyle's collapsing from the defensive end position, so they're going to give him a yard. Yeah, I could see that from the way they were starting to approach the football, so that sets up a third down and six. And see if Central can rise to the occasion, and what we'll have is two teams that have battled to a complete draw so far. Both teams have had the football two times, and depending on how this play works, and maybe both of them have had three and outs. Man in motion for Bedford, Ethan Weber. Back to pass. Swain. Let's it go. Intercepted. Intercepted at the 40-yard line of Central. Biesinger. Biesinger gets up to the 32-yard line, gets up in the air, and gets taken out of bounds by Bedford Zach Vent. But, I mean, that was kind of a telegraph throw. Yeah, from Mercury Swain, and you could just see the anticipation by Eli Lingenfelder to intercept that football and then get a nice run back afterward. Yeah, that play was very slow developing, and it gave the defense a chance to read and react, and that's just what they did. Gets them down to the 32 of Bedford, where it is first down and 10, and can the Dragons draw first blood here tonight? 6.23 remaining, first quarter. Handoff to Hunter Smith. Smith gets down to the 30 and is driven back. These two teams obviously learned a lot about each other in the regular season game and being able to watch the video of what they played since then. And they seem to be up for the task here. This is a tough go of it as far as running so far. And hopefully Jeff can just, like, calm down a little bit. Yeah, just need to play their game a little bit, Dave. That's and if he can uh, get to the way we know he can pass... This could be a huge advantage as he's in the pistol with two sidecars, Hunter Smith and Parker Gregg. That pass is complete out to the 25-yard line. Met and spun backward is Eli Lingenfelder, but it's a nice gain, and that will set up a third down and three from the 25-yard line of Bedford. Yeah, it was a nice pass, but there was a lot of distance. It goes side to side on that, so he had to put a nice touch on that to get that ball way out in that flat. Well, I think that that may, hopefully that's the pass that kind of gets him loose and reminds him of who he is and what he can do. Because we've seen Jeff Hohenstein do some tremendous work. This is a direct snap to Parker Gregg. Gregg's over the 20 and gets down near the 15. He'll be taken down at the 16. And that will be a central first down, first and 10. At the Bedford 16, nice run. And they put Hohenstein out on the far right-hand side as a wide receiver, and they went with the pistol run. Well, I can guarantee you that there is not going to be a pass thrown from at this point on the field from Parker Gregg to Jeff Hohenstein. It may look that way, and you may have to think about it. I can guarantee you that it will not happen. Hohenstein takes the snap. A little bit of a pump fake, and now throws the other way, and a nice adjustment to come back to the football that time by the Dragons' Ethan Eicher as Eicher makes the reception at about the 14-yard line, in which case, well, they're looking like the 13 over there in the far side of the field, and it is actually at the 13-yard line to set up a second down and seven. Gain of three. So it was a nice read. Uh, he went through his progressions and found him out on the flat, so that's a nice recovery for Jeff. And that brings up that second down and seven. Hohenstein. Back to pass. Throws complete to Devin. Boils and Devin dropped it. Did not have a hold of it long enough to get totally credited for a reception. He was hearing footsteps that time. Yeah, he was thinking about yards after the catch as well. He was on a nice slant pattern there. And it was open, but it was quickly then defended after the ball was let loose. 
Well, you know what? That's the way these guys have played all year. You don't want them to change now. No, absolutely not. Go ahead and think about your yak at this particular point. Passing completion stops the clock. 3.55 left to go in the first quarter and no score in the game between Bedford and Central. Owen Stein steps back, one and a half steps, and he hits a nice post pattern over the middle. I guess they you would call that one a skinny post, Lou? Yeah, that was a skinny post. He Josh had five, five receivers in the pattern, and Beesinger, they were just going for that first down, and they picked it up nicely. So now they're inside the 10. They mark them down at the five-yard line, first and goal from there. And so the Dragons try to strike first, and look at this technology here in the Bedford sideline. As one of the defensive players, Jacob Wilson, was just looking at a tablet. On See them passing off the tablet down there. Wow, I'm impressed. Owenstein under center this time, has to get away from a rush, throws toward the corner of the end zone, and it's caught. There what it an is. adjustment by Hunter Smith in the left corner of the end zone. He was standing right on the G of Golden Tigers here at Holidaysburg. And he saw the pass being thrown by Jeff. And Jeff, you know, that's one of those who, yeah, he didn't do that rocket right at him. He threw it away from him and had some height on it, allowing him the opportunity to make that adjustment. Yeah, and, and he read that, and he looked for all of his opportunities out there. Bought some time. It's a nice pitch and catch. Yeah, I'll tell you what. There was a bit of a blitz there by Bedford, but did not pan out for the Bison. Central has the lead 6 nothing. Hunter Smith tries to add to it. Kick is up, and the kick is good. And it makes the score Central 7 and Bedford nothing in the first round of the PIAA AAA playoffs here at Holidaysburg. So you're uh, talking about, Lou, the... I did print out those standings, but I don't seem to have... There they are. I was going to say, you're looking at the top team in AAA... In the state, according to Max Preps. And now they are the eighth rated team in Pennsylvania overall. That's all classes. Yeah, I wrote that down. 6A, 5A, 4A. And they're a 3A team, but they're ranked number eight in the state. It says a lot about this club. Well, both of these clubs could really play up and do well uh, at the next level. Quad, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would give them both a good shot in quad A. No doubt. Well, Jeff calmed down a little bit, made some real nice throws on that drive, and they gobbled some time yeah, off little, the clock as well. A little bit different. He was in the complete, you know, load up the gun and let that football fly, and he started to get back into Jeff Hohenstein mode, which is a good mode to be in <laughs> if you're a Central fan for sure. Yep. Well, I'll tell you what, if you, uh, if you had devious thoughts in your mind about the people in the Cove, Tonight would be your night to pull it off because those stands on the opposite side of the field are almost filled. They might even have shut the blinker light off out there. Yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> Free passage. Okay, kickoff is a low one. It's going to go out of bounds. So mm. that's a turnabout's fair play kind of deal because it was the Bison kicking one out of bounds on a punt earlier. And then actually that was the kickoff for them too. So they kicked one out of bounds, and now Hunter Smith decided to return the favor. So that was a 10-yard penalty, and they're going to bring it out to the uh, 35. Well, let's see if Bedford uh, changes anything up on offensive series this time. I mean, they do run out of that tight formation, and they're predominantly a running attack. All right. Well... After that interception and run back by Biesinger, Central takes advantage of that and scores. That's something they've been very good at this year, too, Lou. I don't have a stat for that, takeaways and how many points they've gotten off of them. Mercury Swain waits until the second running back gets up, and that is Ethan Weber, and Weber gets a first down right at, just a little bit beyond, but pretty darn close to right at the 45, picks up 10, 
and it's first and 10 for Bedford. And that was and an in, inside trap, Dave, with motion to the wide side of the field, and it sprung for that first down. And they're quickly out over the ball, maybe trying to gain some momentum here from a good start to this possession. Swain. Trying to draw central offside. They didn't bite on anything. Swain takes off. And that was Ethan Eicher getting a hold of some jersey, which he can do that and tackle Mercury Swain with. And Swain is a tough character to bring down, Lou. Yeah, he's a big statured young man, six foot, 195. He averages nine yards per rush as well for the Bison. No point nine that time. He got four, set up a second down and six. And the clock down under two and a half left to go here in the first quarter. Central six and Bedford uh, make that central seven and Bedford nothing. Second down and six. Now taking their time. Getting up to the line quickly, Lou, and then taking their time to snap it. Here's Swain. Looked at the screen pass. Didn't throw it. Found somebody else wide open. Over on the far sideline by the central bench, and he completes that pass to Ethan Weber. That is good for a Bedford first down. Yeah, eight at six, is, uh, got eight. 5'11", and he averages 22 yards per reception on the, on the year coming into tonight's contest. So, Yeah, some of those numbers, Lou, I'm starting to see, and, you know, you've been mentioning them. It's going to be less than what those season averages are. Oh, absolutely. You know, it looks like receptions may be about 10 yards shorter for both teams, and running may be anywhere two to three yards shorter. Here's another running play. And what a drive back. Who was that? Trenton Price carrying the football. And he got driven back. And was that uh, Parker Gregg that, that drove Greg. him back? Yeah, Greg hit Initial him contact up. against him. And he just <laughs> stood him up and drove him backward. Nice play, Parker Gregg. That was a tough three yards. To... He almost swatted him back into the backfield. <laughs> Parker Gregg becoming famous for the swat. Minute 15 left to go, first quarter. And here's a pitch play, this one coming over to Ethan Weber. And Weber gets wrapped up in the backfield. He'll lose yardage. Yeah, he's going to lose the three they gained on the last one. Hohenstein and Lingenfelder in on the stop there. And crashing through the middle was good old uh, Mr. Smith, number 32, who really disturbed the flow of that play for the Dragons. So that ends up being a loss of three to set up a second down and 10. Make that third down and 10. My mistake. 40 seconds left to go. This may very well be the final play of the first quarter. Big third down. Swain. Unable to draw central offside. Here's a big rush. Boyles misses him. That leaves Swain open to pass. Throws it down the sideline. And it was thrown out of bounds. I mean, that was intended over there for Ethan Weber, but... He had about, what, low, maybe a yard, yard and a half to his left, which he was already on the left side of the field. So that play just didn't have a chance. Yeah, he threw that ball about 35 yards in the air. So we'll see what happens on this big fourth down coming up for the Bison. And it stopped the clock with 21 seconds. So even though I may have thought that that was going to be the end of first quarter play, it's not. They're going to get one more in. They could maybe get more in, depending. It is a fourth down and a punt for Mercury Swaim and the Bedford Bison. Swaim kicks it away from the 49-yard line. It's going to hit at the 17, roll inside the 10, keep rolling, and then stop at about the 7. Dragons ball first and 10 from their own 7. Lingenfelder let that hit. He thought about picking that up and scurrying, but I think... uh, He made a good choice there because when he was at a point where he was thinking about that, he would have been swarmed under. Yeah. And may have had a shot at losing the football to the return team for Bedford. Yeah, no sense taking an unnecessary hit at this point and sacrificing that ball. So here come the Dragons. All right, Dragons lead 7-0. 10 seconds left in the first quarter. PIAA Triple A State Championship playoff action round one. And here's a handoff. That's Parker Gregg. And he doesn't do a swat, but he does stick that arm out there. And that's a classic stiff arm. If you look that up on Wikipedia, there's a video of Parker Gregg sticking that arm out to swat that guy down, actually push him down. 
It is a good gain, but it does bring an end to the first quarter. We have one in the books at Holidaysburg. It is Central 7, Bedford nothing. Back with more after this on Mix 94.7. If you've been thinking about switching to a credit union, consider Morrison's Co. First Federal Credit Union. Morrison's Co. First Federal Credit Union is a member-owned and controlled financial institution. Member services include e-statements, electronic bill pay, mobile banking, and much more. Call 814-224-2744 or toll-free 800-224-5382. They're located at 7533 Woodbury Pike in Roaring Spring. Their lobby is open Monday through Wednesday and Friday from 9 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Thursday, 9 to 6. Morrison's Co. First Federal Credit Union. Hi, this is Ashley Miller, office manager and event coordinator for Park Hills Golf Club and Tavern 27. We are excited to be the host of your upcoming holiday events. Larger small gatherings can be accommodated in either our fireplace hearth room or our spacious banquet room. Choose from our extensive banquet menu or create a custom menu of your own. We are here to accommodate your every needs. Call 814-944-3313 extension 101 for more information. We look forward to seeing you here soon at Park Hills Golf Club and Tavern 27. Mix 94.7. We are back at Hollidaysburg High School, where it is round one of the PIAA state playoffs in AAA. I'm Dave Shannon, Lou Sato alongside, and so far, it was kind of like when you get out and start your car on a cold morning. Doesn't really want to go, and then eventually you have to stick with it. It actually starts to go. So the key has been inserted, and Central seems to be a little bit warmed up now. Kind of like what Coach Baker said in the pregame show. Hohenstein nearly intercepted. Boy, I'll tell you what, Ethan Weber was a half step away on a pass intended for Josh Biesinger. Wow. He definitely spied that. He was watching uh-huh. the backfield the whole time. And, uh, you know, Weber stands in there at 5'11", 175. He's an outside linebacker here for the Bison. So, Yep, that was almost a pick six, but it was not. And it brings up a third down and short for the Dragons. And now it's the question of, do you go back to tried and true? And you got both Greg, and Greg's going to get the football. He's going to go out over the 15-yard line. He needs to get to the 17. I don't know that he got that That's far. Gonna be it's close. I think that. he's – yeah, you're right, the – where official out is. on the field, yeah. his foot is just about at the 17. At that hash mark. That's that fuzzy bunny hop there. And they set it back behind that. So it is going to be fourth down and about a half yard. As the referee shows us, somewhere around six to eight inches. And we haven't to seen go to a uh, first down. And now fourth down, points. fourth down. Do you really go for this in your end that deep? And, well, guess what? what? Riverboat gambler Dave Baker says, yes, we are. Big fourth down. Parker Gregg, direct snap. Gregg gets over the 15, still trying to drive. I think Bedford stopped him. They did. If the official coming in, the side judge keeps that there, yes, he's still a yard short. That'll be Bedford takes over on downs, and that's a big turning point in this game. They may bring the chains in the book. Nope, they're not even going to do that. Which, if I was reading everything correctly on the field, that's exactly what I would have done. There was no doubt that that was still short of what they needed to gain for a first down. So, here's a little gift. You know, it's kind of early in the holiday season, but (laughs) Central has just given Bedford a gift. Let's see if they can capitalize. Mercury Swain up under center. Fakes the handoff, keeps the ball on the option, gets down to about the 10-yard line, and that's going to be a gain of about six to bring up a second down and four. And Mercury is used to gaining pretty uh, large chunks of yardage, and this is just, a you know, these two teams learned a lot about each other back in the regular season. They did. He's still going to be up under center with this short yardage attack. 10.32 10.32 left to go in the second quarter or the first half, however you want to look at it. This time he does go with a handoff. And as he's falling down, leaning forward with the football is Trenton Price. He gets it down to about the six-yard line. He's going to be close, if not there, for a first down. The White Hat takes a look over toward the sideline where the ball is, and and they're going to measure. Yeah, they're so, going to take a look. 
It's an official timeout. Yep. Hey, I do want to uh, thank our sponsors that have been with us all season here for Dragons football. Bedford Regional Urology, Tavern 27 at Park Hills Golf Club, Coldwell Banker, Town & Country Real Estate, Bob Pennington Broker Ooh. Owner, West Central Equipment, J.P. Mortgage, McCoy's Lawn & Garden, Pacifico Bakery, Horvath Chemical & Supply, and they do confirm that it is a first down. Also, Long's Outpost, Dragon's Den Pizza, Proactive Sports, Roaring Spring, True Value, and Morrison's Co. First Federal Credit Union. So, Bedford looking to tie this game up with the ball at the six-yard line for a first and goal. And it's going to be Swain. Faked the handoff that time once again to Trenton Price. Kept it. And that option did gain yardage for Bedford as they're down around the two-yard line. So it's going to be second and goal from the two. Boyle's on the stop along with some help from Smith after they did that inside uh, handoff again. But he kept Tell you it. what, you fake that handoff to Trenton Price, and Price is 5'11", a buck 90. He can get up there and knock a few guys out of your way if you're Mercury Swain, who's up under center again. Takes the snap. Hands it off, and this time it is a handoff to Trenton Price. And the stands in front of us erupt because we have the Bedford fans over here in front of us on the home side of the football field. Even though Central is the home team on the scoreboard, it is now Central 7 and Bedford 6. And they are going to go for the kick conversion, and it's going to be Lizzie Martz, the 5'3 senior, coming in to attempt the point after. Kick is up. Nice height on it, right down the middle. And it is Bedford tying the game. We have nine minutes, 21 seconds left in the first half, and we are tied. It is Bedford 7 and Central 7. Just a huge... Uh, you know, and I'm sure there will be a lot of questions for Coach Baker at the end of the game about going for it on fourth and very short, that deep in his own territory. Well, they've punted very, very rarely here all year. And again, they're going to stick to what got them here. And that's that hard pound rushing game. So we'll see if it motivates the Scarlet Dragons to come out here. They're going to receive the ball with 921 left in first half action and it's been pretty much heads up on both sides really getting into the flow of the game now tell you what they want to do here is put together about a five minute drive lou and eat this clock down a good ways and come away with the touchdown too during that if they hold on to the ball for that five minute stretch yeah and you got to remember that the bedford uh will get the opening kick to start second half action as well it is kickoff time. And the kick is away off the foot of Carter Kuntz, fielded at the 14-yard line by Biesinger. Over the 20, the 25. And I know the fans in front of us were thinking that there should have been a block in the back on the return against Central, but no flags thrown. And it is the Dragons with the ball. First and 10 at their own 27, I believe, maybe the 26. It's going to be the 26-yard line. So, tied at seven, time to answer what Bedford just did. By the way, in the uh, high school football rankings game, in AAA, the number two team in the state is Bedford. Right. <laughs> so. It's not just all about Central. Bedford is a highly respected team. Parker Gregg, what a great, you know, we talk about it from time to time, what I like to call a patient runner. And Gregg was tearing toward the sideline, and he saw a hole open up over there on the left side, and he just turned on a dime. Yeah, he cut that up on a dime. Good field vision for Parker Gregg. Really finds his way through there. Second down and a yard ball at the 35 of the Dragons. Tied at seven. Hohenstein fakes the handoff. Back to pass. Little RPO. Now he has to get out of the way and try to avoid getting sacked, and he can't. Mercury Swain comes in, 
the ball came out, but the white hat steps in immediately to say, well, sorry about that, but, you know, it was already down and the turf can't cause a turnover. So it's still Dragon's ball at their own 26, but now it's going to bring up a third down and 10. Yeah, they lost all that gain that uh, that they, Parker Greg, Greg made. had. So, yeah. yeah, we'll see what they dial up here on third down. Well, one thing's for sure. I, you know, I know that Jeff has been a real asset as a passer for this team, and and here comes the rush. Hohenstein gets away from one, gets away from another, stops, throws it deep downfield for Parker Grigg. He's got it. He's inside the thirty and eventually brought down at the twenty-five yard line of Bedford. That is a Dragons first down. And, and now a flag comes in because the officials, I think, were getting an earful from the Bedford sideline. And we're going to be able to add a little bit of yardage to that now. Yeah, there was nobody down there blocking, and there was no interference whatsoever. So we'll see what this is. 50 yards. And the sideline, it is just a warning, I think. I don't think they're doing a penalty on it. But, you know, that's the... Uh, you know, we, we see what you guys did. Just don't do it again. So, forewarned, forearmed. Good no call here and playoff action. In the meantime, it is the Dragons ball first and 10 at the Bedford 24. A 50-yard pass completion. Here's a little toss-up. And it is Parker Gregg again. He's going to reverse and go back but be taken down in the backfield. As strong as he is, he could not get out of the grip of Zach Vent. 5'10", a buck 95 is what they list him at, but I'm sure if you ask Parker Gregg about that right now, he'd say, really? Yeah. <laughs> it's a little bit bigger than that, isn't he? Nice play by Zach Vent. Yeah, they had a little inside shuttle pass there, and he just couldn't get around a little jet sweep action on it, if you'd call it that as well. But uh, I think they can go north and south here. They just got to settle the offense down, get a couple good runs. The clock continues to run with 6.49 left in first half action. They end up losing 11 to make it second down and 21. Hohenstein with Hunter Smith beside him on the left. Hohenstein back to pass. And the pocket collapses again, almost loses the football. And they have a hold of him by his jersey. That's Zach Vent that grabbed a hold of him by his jersey and pulled him down at the 40-yard line of the Dragons. Loss of five more, and that'll bring up a third down and 26. There was a flag, and it's a hold on Central. Flag was thrown at the 39-yard line. It would go back 10 yards from that, so I'm pretty sure Bedford would want to take that, even though it would put the down back to second. Let's see what Bedford's coach has decided. Nope, doesn't want it. Kevin Steele says, no, thank you. I'll take that big loss, and you can spot that baby at the 40. They have to get to the 16-yard line. Make that the 14-yard line. Yeah. So that is a hoof right now facing the Central Dragons. Tell you what, they have been really hot trying to get to Hohenstein. They're after him again. An emergency pass, a little flare out to Parker Gregg, and then Mercury Swain says, well, I've seen that before, and it's actually another one-yard loss for the Dragons to set up a fourth down, and I th think they have to get to uh, the Heidelberg Golf Club to get a first down. Yeah. Yeah, they have a long way to go. It'll be 27 yards for first down. So we're going to see him in punt formation, and they're going to put uh, Ethan Eicher back to punt. Well, I'll be more realistic. They have to get the Sylvan Hills golf course to get a first down. Not quite the Heidelberg. Here is the kick, and it is away. It's going to hit at the five, hit on a line drive. That's a nice save. Swain actually is able to pick the ball up. Central. On the return team, I'm not too sure who swatted at it, but knocked it back into the field of play, did not step into the end zone. So that was a live ball. And just to show you the reflexes of Mercury Swain, he picked that up, and I'll tell you what, he might have been, what, maybe a move and a half away from going all the way with yeah, it. Yeah, he's a good athlete, good field presence. That was uh, swatted by number nine, Josh Biesinger for Central. Okay. 
Josh has really had his end of the season has been outstanding. So Bedford has the ball again deep in their own territory as they're going to start here from their own six. See if Central can pin their ears back and try to get the ball back with good field position. Handoff once again goes to Trent and Price, and Price will get out near the 10-yard line. That'll be a gain of four and bring up a second down and six. Yeah, nothing fancy about that. They're just running the ball straight ahead. Nice little dive play by the Bison. So a second down and six facing them as the clock continues to roll with under five left to go here in the first half. We're tied at seven at Holidaysburg. Swain fakes the handoff and then pitches it as he's being tackled. And then he ended up pitching it over there to Ethan Weber, and he was unceremoniously dropped to the turf. That was a pretty risky pitch there. Yeah, um, it was. They're gonna have to look he's at falling that down, and he's still. But once again, we were talking about his athletic ability there on that, you know, ball that was batted back to keep it in the field of play by Central and almost being able to get that and run for a touchdown. So I think he thinks he may have a little Mahomes magic in him. Oh, although this would be Mercury magic, would it not? There you go. All right. As setting up behind him is Ethan Weber. And then there's a confusion as to what play that they really do want to run. So there's a timeout called by the Bison with 4.03 left to go here in the first half. Do want to thank our sponsors. That group includes Morrison's Co. First Federal Credit Union, Roaring Spring True Value, Proactive Sports, Dragon's Den Pizza, Long's Outpost, Horvath Chemical and Supply, Pacifico Bakery, McCoy's Lawn and Garden, J.P. Mortgage, West Central Equipment, Coldwell Banker, Town & Country, Real Estate, Bob Pennington Broker Owner, Tavern 27 at Park Hills Golf Club, and Bedford Regional Urology. Uh, we wouldn't be here without those good folks uh, supporting high school football. All right, both teams at their respective sidelines trying to get Everything in order for a big third down play here. You know, we talk about that flipping the field position, and if they're able to stop Bedford here, chances are they're going to get the ball in pretty good field position, they being central. If Bedford can keep the drive going, well, that may keep the Dragons from being able to score again in the first half. No guarantee that Bedford would necessarily score, but this is huge. On third down and four. Swain. Under center. And the handoff goes to the first back up and around. Mercury Swain and ripped to the ground is Maxwell Washington for no gain, I believe. Maybe even a loss of a yard. But I think it will go as a no gain and we'll have a fourth down and four. Big play for the defense of Coach Dave Baker. Yeah, they stand tall and uh, not the Dragons are, are going to get a shot here with uh, three minutes left here in the first half action for another offensive opportunity here. Well, we've watched this team enough this year, Lou, and that's more than enough time. Now, Eli Lingenfelder, not looking for anything big as far as a punt goes, is standing at the Bedford 43 to receive the punt from Mercury Swain, and it goes behind him, and he thought about picking it up a couple of times. He didn't. Ball rolls dead, and Justin Arnold of Bedford is right on top of it. So they mark it down at the 49-yard line of the Bison. So that's all the further Central has to take the football to add some points here in the first half in a close, close game tied at seven. Yeah, so we'll see what uh, the Scarlet Dragons can dial up here. They need a good offensive series here as they wind down first half action. I think the biggest thing they need, Lou, is for Jeff Hohenstein to get some confidence in his passing game here. And it's going to be a handoff to Hunter Smith and went up into the middle of the line, and that got clogged up in a hurry. He could have used some Drano to try to open up that clog. It ends up being a gain of one and a second and nine. Coming out of the bottom of the pile, there was Carter Kuntz. Defensively for the Bison. Trying to follow the mystical, magical tablet that the Bedford Bison have on their sideline. They have one, Lou. 
It's not like they have a whole bunch of them like there it is down there. Holding it right now is uh, Jacob Wilson of the Bison. Second down and nine. There's a pass. That's complete to Hunter Smith. He's inside the 40 and is taken down at about the 36-yard line. That's good for a Dragons first down. Mercury Swaim on the hit for Bedford and brings Smith to the ground, but not, as you said, not after a first down. They're going to set the chains. The clock continues to roll. First and 10 with the ball at the 36. And, you know, one of the things that Lou has pointed out a couple of times here, it's going to be Bedford ball to start the second half. You would love to be able to get this into the end zone. There's a pass. That is complete to Eli Lingenfelder inside the 30. He'll be dropped at about the 28-yard line. And that's going to leave a second down and short. So now, and I am really as a someone who's followed Central, kind of happy to see this from Jeff Hohenstein. He's in his own right yeah, now in this drive. He's got the rhythm going right now. And uh, that middle of the field is wide open because Bedford doesn't want to get beat deep. So they're giving a lot of cushion. Right now they got a six, seven-yard cushion on every receiver. Minute 40 remaining in the first half. Hohenstein takes the snap, looks downfield, and they sack him again. So coming in for the sack at that time for Bedford was Cooper Lingenfelder, number 60, listed at six foot two and a quarter. Bit of a fire plug out there, Lou. They're getting a lot of pressure offensively, uh, you know, on Central. And Central hasn't dealt with much of that pressure for the entire season. So Central, Central by the way, had uh, three timeouts here. So they're going to use one of them because they were unable to work out that deal with the uh, Wendy's manager to get the free Frosties yeah, on the way home. Can't trade them in at the drive through anymore, Dave. That was over. Mm. It was a fall that promotion. Ship, that ship has sailed. <laughs> it, it has left the harbor, my friend. <laughs> All right. I see you taking a look there. I don't know what you may have as far as scores go. I really wasn't expecting a whole lot. I know the Lightner communication stations are following Bishop Guilfoyle into the postseason. Looks like they're up 14 nothing if that's correct. And that was first quarter action. Juniata Valley leading Portage 14 nothing. Richland up easily over Forest Hills 21 nothing. Reynolds is ahead of Northern Bedford, 14-7 to in the second quarter. State College over Delaware Valley, 14-7, to that in the second quarter. And it is BG, 14, Homer Center, nothing, that game being played at Homer Center. Those are the other games going on tonight. We'll keep you up to date on those. Right now, we're trying to keep you up to date on Central and Bedford. The game is tied at 7, and we're nearing the end of the first half. Bedford Drive, I'm sorry, Central driving inside Bedford territory. Hohenstein back to pass, and he's going to be sacked again. He's taken down by Josiah Wyant that time, and that's going to be a loss of about five. And that will set up uh, it's a little bit more than that, actually. That's a loss of six to set up a fourth down and 16. So at this point in the game, and the ball being where it is, the 42-yard line of the Bison, you're definitely going to go for it on fourth down. As the clock ticks down, it's down to 53 seconds left to go here in the first half. We're tied at seven. And at this point, now they let the play clock get down to one second, and then Central called their timeout. So... Took as much time as they could off the clock legally. They stop at 44 seconds remaining here in the first half. And it's going to be up to the Dragons to make sure that the Bison are unable to do anything points-wise here at the end of the first half. Keep this tied at seven. Yeah, you don't want to give up a quick score here, as I said, uh, because Bedford opens up the second half with the ball. But Bedford, give them credit. They are getting to Jeff Hohenstein. So they're beating that offensive line of Central. Central's going to have to win at halftime and make some serious adjustments. its I'll tell you what, it's not going to be the typical pocket game that Jeff Hohenstein is very comfortable with. Because right now that pocket continues to collapse frequently. And right now we still have one play to look back at. The reason we're tied at seven. 
The Dragons went for it on fourth down and under a yard. Kick is away off the foot. Biker and fair catch signaled for. It bounces at about the 12-yard line and back out to the 15. And they're going to mark it at the 16, I think. Uh, just above the 15, so we will call it the 16. That's where the Bison have it. First and 10. They have 36 seconds left to try to do something with it. And believe me, there's no doubt in my mind that Mercury Swain can make something happen in that amount of time. Yeah, he's been doing it all year for the Bison uh, from that quarterback position, not afraid to tuck it and go. So, All right. A little pistol action here for Bedford. They got protection on both sides of Swain. One of them evacuates that area, and it's going to take the pitch. Turns it at the 15-yard line, and able to get up for about a gain of three is Maxwell Washington. Clock rolling at 20 seconds. And I think Bedford may be content to just let this one play out. I see the entire team moving down to that part of the field, which they'll <laughs> exit from here at the end of the first half. Yep, that'll be down the last to five play. seconds. So that is going to do it for the first half. An even one on the scoreboard. Actually, defensively, I'm going to give a bit of an edge to Bedford here in the first half. Yeah, so. they've done their homework, Dave. They've shut down this high-powered offense of the Central Scarlet Dragons. All right, we have one half in the books, and the score is Central 7 and Bedford 7. We'll take this time out and be back with more at halftime. It is the Coldwell Banker Town & Country Real Estate Halftime Show as we have some first-half highlights and we have some scores from around the area. We were promised a visit by Homer Delatry. We're not going to hold our breath over that, but maybe Homer will actually show up and talk to us here. We'll take a time out and be back with more from Holidaysburg. We're tied at 7 here on Mix 94.7. Dr. Stephen Yanishak and the staff at Bedford Regional Urology would like to take this moment to wish all the young men on the gridiron a safe and exciting football season. Dads and paps, don't forget to get your prostate checked. Early detection is the key and will help make sure you're still around to cheer on your children and grandchildren for many football seasons to come. Call 814-623-0552. That's 814-623. All right, gentlemen, here's what we got for the stat or the highlight so far. Go ahead, Go ahead, Jay. All right. We got the interception in the first. Uh, the Smith touchdown in the first. And then that fought tough pass that Hohenstein made in the second. Sounds good. That was to Greg, the pass to Greg. Way of life at Caldwell Banker, Town and Country Real Estate. Call 946 4343. There's nothing more exciting than seeing your company name or look. This one's a little bit more competitive than normal, huh? Oh, yeah. Active sports in Altoona can make your business. Yeah, I'd or say uh, Bedford did their homework. Custom art department, screen printing, and embroidery. Yeah, they did. <laughs> logo design for an event. Proactive Sports is your go-to source for screen printing and embroidery, and they even customize. Find them on the web at ProactiveSportsINC.com or stop in and see Proactive Sports in their shop at 5910 California Avenue in Altoona. Pacifico's bakery products have been on the dinner table of families throughout central Pennsylvania since 1947. Whether it's Pacifico's famous Italian bread, your favorite sandwich rolls, or any of the other varieties of quality products you have loved for years. And it's located right here in our own hometown. Check out the Pacifico's Bakery Outlet, where you can choose your favorites at a great price. Stop in every Friday for some yummy extra special baked goods. Pacifico's Bakery in Altoona, proud to be a part of our community. When you're buying a home, you need somebody that you can trust. Baby mortgage. Family first and friendly. It's exciting to finance your home with us. J.P. Mortgage Lending, your key to real estate success. J.P. Mortgage Lending, your key to real estate success. J.P. Mortgage Lending. Downtown Holidays for NMLS number 132090. Farming demands well-built equipment. Kubota equipment that's proven for over a century. Tractors that are adaptable and versatile. 
Hay Tools backed by a two-year warranty. Sidekick utility vehicles where durability meets speed and productive SSV skid steers. Visit your local Kubota dealer for a demo today. McCoy's Lawn and Garden, Route 36 Roaring Spring, your local Kubota dealer. This is Central High School Football on Mix 94.7. The Halftime Show is brought to you by Coldwell Banker Town & Country Real Estate. Bob Pennington, broker owner. Let's go back to the field with Dave Shannon and Lou Seidel. And welcome back to Holidaysburg High School. We're tied at seven at the half, and the one thing that really caught my attention here is how much work that the Bedford Bison did to get prepared for this game and understand what they needed to do to take Jeff Hohenstein out of his comfort area. Lou and I have talked about this all year, about how Jeff Hohenstein never goes into a panic. And just he trusts his line to keep him safe. He never hurries anything. There were a couple of things that were a little bit different for Jeff here at the beginning of the game. One of those was the fact that he was, uh, well, shall we say, maybe a little too comfortable in that pocket to the point where he'd still be standing there not getting out of the way and Bedford had broken down the blocking and they were coming after him and they've sacked him probably six times already I'd say yeah they, they have they've made some good schemes defensively with that defensive line of the Bison and you know Central hasn't made adjustments now we think at halftime the coaches will definitely make some adjustments give Jeff some more protection. Yeah, you may have to take a couple weapons off the field and bring someone in to block, you know, make sure he's protected. You, you might do that. Thank <laughs> you. 
2021 Central High School Marching Band. The band is under the direction of Mr. Daniel Drum. Other art instructor is Kimberly Inler. Major and instructor is Erica Coffin Smith. Drum major is Kirsten Biddle. And assistant drum major is Connor Amo. Commanding officer is Liam Walters. And assistant officer is Justin Ramsey. This year's show, The Beatles, featuring paperback writer, Let It Be, Hey You, and Get Back. Central High School is proud to present for your enjoyment the Central High School Marching Band.
Hey, thanks for dropping yeah, thank by. Thank you, guys. Appreciate yeah. everything you do. Hey, we appreciate uh, being able to come to a nice facility like this and broadcast a game. We'll come back, and we will get you ready for the second half. We're at halftime here at Hollidaysburg in the postseason in the PIAA State Playoffs. It is round one. Horvath Jr. with Horvath Chemical and Supply. And are you looking to extend the life and appearance of your vehicle? At Horvath Chemical and Supply, we have quality products to make your ATV, car, truck, RV, or boat spotless. We have hundreds of interior or exterior items for your vehicle, including cleaners, degreasers, vehicle care products, and sanitizing supplies. We have been in the business for many years, and our family is here to help. We are the one-stop shop for your vehicle. If we don't have it, you don't need it. Shop local and visit us today at Horvath Chemical in Roaring Springs. Stop in today and see all the retail product you can buy. Hey, y'all. Let me tell you about my buddy Earl. He fancies himself as a great handyman, a real do-it-yourself kind of guy. Problem is, Earl gets himself in a bind way too often, so I always end up taking him down to Long's Outpost to get the right tools for any project. Long's Outpost not only has tools and building supplies, but lots of toys for us good old boys. Stuff for hunting, fishing, and camping. And they have two locations, 3936 Cove Mountain Road in Martinsburg and 1654 Dunnings Creek Road in New Paris. Well, sounds like Earl's at it again. Time to get to Long's Outpost. Dragon Stent Pizza Route 36 Roaring Spring across from Giant Eagle is ready for football season. And if you can't watch the game, make the best of it while listening with a delicious spread from Dragon's Den Pizza. Call 814-224-7992. That's 814-224-7992. And have your own high school football tailgating party while you cheer on the home team. Open Monday through Saturday, 11 to 8. Sunday, noon to 8. Call ahead for fast service. 814-224-7992. Dragon's Den Pizza. Located in the center of Dragon Nation. When it comes to hardware, you want to go to a store that's experienced, a store that has built trust in the community over a period of time. That's Roaring Spring True Value. Roaring Spring True Value has been serving the community for 158 years. Whether it's plumbing, electrical, lawn and garden needs, or a huge selection of paint with color matching, or if you need high-tech keys and remotes, the knowledgeable staff at Roaring Spring True Value can get the job done right. Roaring Spring True Value, supplying your home since 1863. If you've been thinking about switching to a credit union, consider Morrison's Co. First Federal Credit Union. Morrison's Co. First Federal Credit Union is a member-owned and controlled financial institution. Member services include e-statements, electronic bill pay, mobile banking, and much more. Call 814-224-2744 or toll-free 800-224-5382. They're located at 7533 Woodbury Pike in Roaring Spring. Their lobby is open Monday through Wednesday and Friday from 9 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Thursday, 9 to 6. Morrison's Co. First Federal Credit Union. Union. When the leaves change color, it is a beautiful time of the year until they hit the ground. Your ground. Good thing West Central has John Deere tractor packages starting at $156 per month. They can handle chores year round, leaf collection, snow removal, move firewood, whatever. West Central also has John Deere compact construction equipment. Visit one of their five locations or westcentraleq.com. Offer ends October 31st. Some restrictions apply. See dealer for details. WBRX, Crescent Altoona, a service of Lightner Communications. Mix 94.7. We're back at Hollandaysburg High School, where the score at halftime is Bedford 7 and Central 7. I'm Dave Shannon, joined by Lou Seidel. The teams tonight, well, Central has their home unis on. That would be the gray tops with the white numbers trimmed in scarlet and the scarlet pants as well as they finish their warm-ups here before the second half. Bedford dressed in their all-white, and Mercury Swain needs a touch-up by Tom Callahan to whiten that uniform up a little bit. But uh, I digress in that particular case. All-white uniforms, blue numbers, blue, blue letters as well. And a little bit of the old-fashioned Penn State look with the numbers on the sides of the helmet for most of the players that are out there. Yeah, nothing flashy about these Bedford uniforms, but uh, they're going to need cleaned up after tonight's contest. Yes, they are. And we're on artificial turf, so <laughs> that's that's uh, the way that has been going so far. So a big surprise to me. I'm sure somewhat of a surprise to the central coaching staff to be here tied as we begin the second half, and of course, Bedford will get the ball to start the second half as Hunter Smith emerges from the sideline with the tee. He likes to set up on a hash mark. He sets up on the near hash this time. 
just in case he would happen to pull one. That'll keep it away from going out of bounds as uh, we've had a couple of miscues, one on the Bedford side, one on the central side with the kicking game and the ball going out of bounds on kickoffs, which is a little bit of a penalty. They call that illegal procedure. Hunter Smith kicks it, a good one, end over end. It's going to be fielded at the 11, out over the 15, the 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, and 40 of Central and is finally touched out of bounds. Making the touchdown saving push is Jack Dunn, number four. And Max Washington on the return for the Bison, and that's something that Central wasn't expecting. And so, what a way to start the second half for the Bedford Bison, and not so much for the Central Dragons. Well, All right, here comes your call on your defense right out of the gate here in the second half. The ball is at the 37-yard line of Central. And make it the 38, first down. Swain turns, and he gives the ball off that time as taking it up into the line was Trenton Price. And Price ends up being spun down, and Hunter Smith would stop for the Dragons. Yeah, we're going to have about a three-yard gain on the carry, and they're running a really tight, compact offense with a couple of... Uh... Yeah, there's extra protection in there for Mercury Swain, to be sure. It's just the kind of look they want to give Central at this point. It's not that they've been passing a lot and Swain needs the protection. I'm going to be curious to see how the the blocking scheme changes for Central for Jeff Owenstein. And there's a handoff this time going to Trenton Price. He's up. He's darn close to the first down. If he doesn't have it, he may be a yard short, Lou. He's going to be a little short. It's going to bring up a third and one just underway here in second half action. So the Bison, very patient, very methodic in their approach here to the second half, and they're just gaining yards per carry. Third down and one with the ball sitting at the 28-yard line of the Central Dragons. And after a successful return on the kickoff, trying to get their first first down of the second half is the Bedford Bison. Mercury Swain will be the ball carrier on the quarterback keep, and he will probably get stopped right at the line to gain. It looks like they're going to put him at the 27. That's what he needed. We'll see what the white hat decides. He'll take a look at it, and he'll say, he's going to say, I want to measure it, is what he's going yeah, to say. it's going to be an interesting measurement. So, All right, so they call him in from the sideline to measure in a game that is being brought to you on Mix 94.7 by Bedford Regional Urology Tavern 27 and Park Hills Golf Club, Coldwell Banker, Town & Country Real Estate, Bob Pennington, broker owner, West Central Equipment, J.P. Mortgage, McCoy's Lawn and Garden, and it is short by about three inches according to the White Hat. Also, the game being brought to you by Pacifico Bakery, Horvath Chemical and Supply, Long's Outpost, Dragon's Den Pizza, Proactive Sports, Roaring Spring True Value, and Morrison's Cove, First Federal Credit Union. Boy, there's some careful protractor-type measurements going on there as they move that ball over toward the hash. It sure was. Well, they're doing a good job. No, no, this crew has done a great job. So, fourth down and a minimal amount. Can Central return the favor from the first half? Let's see. Swain is up under seven. Center takes a snap. They bounce him back. They're going to stop him. They stopped him cold. They shoved him back about a yard, and then they brought him down at the 29-yard line. And, indeed, the Central Dragons have returned the favor from the first half on fourth down. Maybe not getting the ball in as good a position as they gave it to Bedford, but getting the ball is a big thing. It is, and let's see if that momentum can swing to a good offensive series here for the Scarlet Dragons. And it looks like they have a series of plays called to start the second half here as they're quickly out over the ball. And there's the handoff. And that one goes to Hunter Smith, I believe, or was that Greg? I was unable to catch the number on the way by. And that was Hunter Smith. Smith gets out to the 34-yard line. That's going to be so a gain of five. Minimal- 
and suddenly I'm talking to myself. There you go. <laughs> Left ear, right ear. Here we go. <laughs> Hey, by the way, be tuned at the end of the game for the Bedford Regional Urology Player of the Game. That'll be coming up after this one has concluded. We have a ways to go here. And Central trying to get back into control of this game. We're tied at seven. Hohenstein lets it go. Biesinger with a catch at the 35. Avoids one tackler. And then coming in for the second attempt was Maxwell Washington. Washington's played himself a game here tonight, too, Lou, as he uh, ends up stopping Biesinger's forward progress at the 35 to set up a third down and four. It's a manageable four. He did come up on, on a nice play, and uh, Max is in there at 5'10", 170. He's only a junior for the Bison as well. It's amazing to see the play of some of these really young players, and that's been across the board here. I mean, Bedford and... Central have their share of those players, but we've seen it across the board. Hohenstein, quick release that time, and it looked like Boyles may have there been touched is. before the is. ball even got there, so a flag flies in, and then I think there may be one after that as well. I think there may be an associated sportsmanship foul that comes after that. Well, Let's see what they call. Definitely be a first down for Central, and then whatever follows will follow. Hopefully there's nothing off-sending here for the Scarlet Dragons. One thing to remember, folks, is high school is not the ball gets placed at the spot of the foul. It's a yardage penalty when it's a pass interference, and it is. So the first thing they do is mark off that yardage, and that takes it out to the 46-yard line of Central. And they continue to walk. It's over midfield. Nope, right at midfield is where they're going to spot it down. And the only thing they did signify, Lou, was the pass interference. Didn't see anything else, personal foul or anything like that. All right, first and 10 from midfield. And here's a handoff. This one going to Hunter Smith. And Smith rumbles over the 45-yard line of Bedford down to the 41. Nice gain, leaving him a second down and one. And there is one major change there at halftime by the Scarlet Dragons as it is turned into the Hunter Smith feature back half. That's okay because Hunter averages eight yards a touch, and he's doing that tonight. So we'll see. I have seen Parker in the game. But I don't think he's out. Yep, yeah, no, he's there. Okay, I'm gonna get him. A I pass, think this is the uh, a... this is the deflect attention away from him by using Hunter Smith, and then Parker will be open downfield about twenty five yards, and no one will be around him. Swain bouncing and pointing, and he was pointing at the play clock. I guess their play clock may have expired. Let's see. There is a meeting. A confab at the 45-yard line. Dead ball foul signified, and it is delay of game against Central. So that'll take it back five, and that will make it a second down and six now. So the ball will be placed at the 46-yard line, or it should be. There you go, buddy. We don't want that leather bunny out here. Good spot. 7.44 left to go in the third quarter. Still tied at seven. Second down and six. Jeff Hohenstein takes the snap, fakes the handoff to Smith, avoids a tackler. He'll run. He's over the 40. He's over the 35. Down to the 30. Fumbles the football, but it is recovered down there. Is that Devin Boyles that jumped on that? No. It was Hunter Smith, yeah, Smith who jumped on the loose ball that flew out. That was a bit of a punch as Jeff Hohenstein doing the old loaf of bread carry and got the ball swatted out of his hands, and it was on the turf, and Hunter Smith was Johnny on the spot. It is still central ball. It is first and 10 now at the Bedford 27. That's a good momentum changer there. The uh, central Dragons need a little life in this offense. A whole lot of momentum changing going on here as they were able to stop Bedford on fourth down and three inches, hand off to Hunter Smith, and Hunter's actually enjoying, I think, being the 
quote unquote featured back here in the second half. Yeah, he's a, he's a big, strong young man. We've talked about that all season long, and he just goes north and south with authority. Going to be a gain of four in the second and six now for the Dragons. Beesinger goes out. Coming in from the sideline with the play is Ethan Eicher. Second down and six. Uh, both Parker Gregg and Hunter Smith flank to either side of Jeff Owenstein. Hands it off to Parker Gregg. One good block from Hunter Smith. He dives forward and will be brought down at about the 15-yard line, which will be good for another Dragons first down. And even though Bedford got the football to start the second half, was putting a drive together, a little riverboat gambling by Kevin Steele, the head coach of the Bison, kind of coming back to haunt him here in the second half. Yeah, and that tandem of Smith and Greg out of the backfield, that's two prominent young men running the football. All right, we are in the third quarter, tied at 7. 6.28 left to go in the third quarter. Hohenstein with protection, throws for Devin Boyles, and that is tall for him. Good defense there by Justin Arnold on Devin Boyles, but just thrown about uh, well, a foot and a half, maybe too high for Devin Boyles to come down with. That's a big target at 6'5 out there, too, so you can take a little off of that, but that's going to loosen up the defense, hopefully, with a couple of tosses here and there. So that brings up a second down and 10. That may be the first sputter of this particular drive which started after stopping Bedford on a fourth and inches. Hohenstein's going to run one. He turns the corner on the right side. He's going to get inside the 15, and he'll be brought down at the, I think they will give him the 14, and that's it. I thought maybe the way the side judge was lining up there, he was going to give him the 13, but he only gives him the 14. And so that is going to leave us with a... There is a flag out there right at the 16-yard line. So we'll see what that's all about. Central's walking backward, and rightfully they should. The foul be, is on them. Oh, looks like a hold in, in that interior line. And there's the official signification of that from the white hat. It is a hold against the Scarlet Dragons, sending the ball back to the 26-yard line and creating a second down, and I'm going to call that 21. At this point. So the good thing about that is it's still second down. You take that in two chunks and you're right back in business. They need to get down to the five yard line to get the first down. Hohenstein, Hunter Smith beside him to his left. Pocket begins to collapse. Let's it go toward the end zone. Parker Greg reaches out with one hand, tries to make the catch, and he can't. Defense by Maxwell Washington who's become such a key player here for the Bison in the second half defensively and offensively for that matter. Yeah, he's all over the field, and Washington's 5'10", going up against the six-foot uh, Greg. And Greg's had that pass thrown to him quite a few times in the fade pattern in the corner of the end zone there. Washington came into the game with 21 solo tackles and 20 assists on the season. And it will be a third down and 21. Coming in, Cooper Lingenfelder, who does have himself a sack of Jeff Owenstein back in the first half. We're in the second half. Nothing's changed. We're tied at seven. Owenstein takes the snap, steps back down the middle of the field, and it was just a little bit behind and tall for Parker Gregg, and that was kind of scary because the guy that was closest to him was Mercury Swain. Yeah. And you just know that he's the type of player that could have turned that into an interception. And who knows how many yards yeah, he may have been able to get. Yeah, if you give him any type of field advantage here, he's got fleet of foot. He could scoot right down the sideline. So brings up a fourth and 21, 533 left in third quarter action. Central moving from left to right here in the third quarter. They'll go for it on fourth down. Jeff Hohenstein gets the snap, goes back, starts to run, lets it go right before the 25, and that was a great effort by Parker Gregg to avoid giving up the interception. That one sailed a little bit, not that much on Jeff Hohenstein, but 
Parker Gregg looked at it, and it looked like that was going to be right into the arms of a Bedford defender, and he played defense on that particular pass to knock it away and make sure that the Bison did not get the football in the end zone and get the interception. Instead, it's not so bad. They have it at their own 26. So either way, that worked out well for the Bison. Tied at seven still, third quarter. And we have 526 left to go in it. And it's going to be a halfback option pass, and it is complete. Wide open at the 50, the 40, the 30, the 20, and it's going to be Maxwell Washington, the guy that we have been talking about here in the second half, makes the catch, runs it all the way in for a touchdown. 78 yards on the play. I was going to say 74 because I was at the 26, as I recall. There you go. So you give him 24 out to the 50 and another 50 on to that 74-yard touchdown pass, Maxwell Washington. And now the point after attempt coming in is Lizzie Martz. Already has one in the game. There's the spot. The kick is up, and the kick is fading to the right, but it stays inside the upright. It is good. And Bedford has taken the lead 14 to 7 with 5-12 left to go here in the third quarter. A lot of time remaining in the game. But, you know, that's both of these teams have that ability. They're always one play away from breaking something big. And in this case, it was the bison able to break a big one on a nice pass to Maxwell Washington. And Washington showed us what kind of speed he has. And hats off to the uh, Bedford coaching uh, staff, really making those halftime adjustments, gambling a little bit on their own with that halfback pass. Maxwell Washington on the season with 543 yards. Swain, because of his passing yardage, but his rushing as well, has 2,219 yards. But there are obviously some athletes there on the Bedford side of the football beyond that. And uh, tip of the cat to Maxwell Washington on a great play for him there. Uh, On the season, Maxwell is the second leading receiver, averaging, uh, let's see, 32.6 yards per game. His average catch almost 22 yards. He and Weber, the leading receivers for Mercury Swain. So now it's a kickoff by the Bison to the Dragons. And the kick is away off the foot of Carter Kuntz. And coming up over the 20, the 25. Biesinger started to go toward the 30, and what a takedown tackle performed by Ethan Weber. Weber grabbed a hold of him around the midsection by the jersey and just basically whipped him right down to the ground. At the 28-yard line, it will be Dragons ball first and 10. And this is probably the most physical game that Central's been in all year because Bedford's stepping up, special teams and defense. Well, the Dragons, after successfully stopping a fourth and inches play, began to drive it right down the field, and then everything, it was Bedford stiffened up. Here's Parker Gregg. He's going to get over the 30, and he's still above the turf with his knees not touching. He's going along with one hand and uh, he has a hold of the ball with the other hand and he ends up gaining six yards there for a second down and four, the ball at the 34-yard line of the Dragons. Yeah, they need a little momentum here. We've seen that they are a quick strike offense, so here comes Hohenstein and the gang. Well, they definitely want to get the points to answer Bedford here. Parker Gregg takes the handoff. He's up to the 35 and dropped at the 36. A stick to it kind of tackle for Trenton Price of Bedford. Yeah, those two both have the physicality there. They're just about the same. Price may be a little bit smaller by an inch at the beginning of the season. That would be a good wrestling match there, I think. Trenton Price and and uh, Parker Gregg. Interesting. All right. That leaves us with a third down and two. Something that you would think would be easily makeable 
and it's going to be Hohenstein with the carry. First down and more over the 40, 45 out over midfield and into Bedford territory, brought down at the 46-yard line of the Bison. And <laughs> Eli Lingenfelder had a little bit of concern there because he didn't see Jeff moving right yeah. away. Yeah. And it was just that he had a Bison laying on top of him, and some of those Bison are pretty heavy. Indeed, and and Jeff tucked the ball and held on to it as well. So yeah, yeah, he did have that one fumble there. Got coached back up in the a, first half. Coached up a little bit. Oh on yeah, sideline. You know. Yeah, he he may have had his dad up him a little bit on the sideline. That may may have been a little fatherly advice in the locker room. First and ten. Hohenstein back to pass has time. Let's it go. Lingenfelder. Catches it, but he's out of bounds. Yeah, just he had one. Out of bounds. He had one foot that looked like it was going to stay in, and he never really had control of it to get the credit for the reception. How many times have we seen that play this year? Exactly. I like the call because that's going to loosen up some of that defense, and they only came with four on that defensive line for the Bison, so they're going to try to be a little prevent defense. I think the other thing we have to say, Lou, is whatever the blocking problem may have been for Hohenstein in the first half, they really addressed it. Now, one of the things is Hohenstein carrying the football for runs like he just did there as he gets over the 45 and is brought down at about the 42-yard line. And that will set up a third down and six, gain of four for Hohenstein on that play. And Max Washington on the tackle for the Bison. He's been all over the place here for Bedford. So once again, getting Hohenstein active in the running game seems to have changed the complexion here and what Bedford is able to do. Plus, I think there were assignments that were changed at halftime as well. Too wide to the right for Hohenstein. Rolls to his right, looks downfield. It's going to heave it toward the end zone. It's short, and Lingenfelder almost came down with it. Guess who was there? Maxwell, Washington. <laughs> and there is a flag on the play, probably a hold on on uh, the Central Dragons. We might have somebody downfield. Either way, it's probably going to be against Central. And they have the flag at the original line of scrimmage, the 46. Well, now that that turns into a cloth bunny and jumps up to the 45. Oh, it's a block below the waist. So that's called against Central. And they're going to check to see if head coach Kevin Steele wants to accept that penalty as this would roll that over to a fourth down, if I'm not mistaken, right? All right. It'll take it back. Oh, well, yeah, one. I'd have taken that penalty, too, for Pete's sake. Yeah, that's a big one. Takes it back to the 41-yard line. Wait a minute. One too many. They're going to set it down at the 45 of the Dragons. So, ends up being a penalty of 10 and a third down now and 19. A little... Uh muddle huddle there on the officiating crew to just making sure they get the call right and the placement right so well you know they were particular about resetting the flag there at the 45 and that is a 10 yard penalty so no nope, it's gonna make it a 15 they're gonna take it back to the 40 so and now asking for an explanation is lose buddy josh wait yeah <laughs> So, He's going to lose that discussion, so yeah, he'll I think, go back to the, to the huddle for some. So he got all the explanation he was going to get that time. So now it is third down and 24. Parker Gregg running. He's back to midfield and falls down forward to the 49 of Bedford, and he's four yards away. I'll make it three from where the down marker stands. So it is a fourth down and 14, and in the punt, it'll be Ethan Eicher. So that was a dry that looked like it may be fruitful for the Dragons, but it ends up not being that. Bedford still leading 14-7. to seven. That one's high in the air and misjudged by Maxwell Washington, but it just bounces around there at the 16, 
and goes dead. So it'll be Bison Ball first and 10 at their own 16 third quarter with just a minute 35 left. And it is Bedford up by a score of 14 to 7. And this is the deepest and the season that Central's been down by seven with 135 left in the third period. They're not used to being in this position, Dave. No, they're not. One interesting thing there is I stood up to uh, check on the clock on the scoreboard. I see Lizzie Martz staying loose on the sideline for the Bison. May call her in to go ahead and try for a field goal. Here's a big gainer this time as Swain hands it off to Trenton Price, who gets out over the 30-yard line. They're going to mark him down at the 33, and that is a first down right out of the gate on this possession for the Bison. And right up the middle, nothing fancy about that. Had some good offensive line blocking there by the Bison. First down and 10. Another score here by Bedford would create a steep mountain for Central to have to climb. This time, that handoff is going to end up gaining about five because of the refusal to go down. As uh, once again, they uh, was that Swain that carried that, or was that uh, Trenton Price again? That was Price again. Okay. He bounced off the thought. first would-be tackler because it wasn't wrapped up and just kept going. So- Hunter Smith nailed him. You know, about uh, two yards up the field, but he just kind of bounced right off that, like Lou said, and ended up getting five out of the carry, a second and five. Mercury Swain getting a lot of help from his friends here tonight. 14 to seven in favor of the Bison. Swain up under center. Turns, hands the ball off, running to the right side and getting wrapped up. Ball's loose on the ground, and everybody on the central field Central side of the field says it's central ball, and the most important one with the striped shirt on said, yes, indeed, it is central ball. Ethan Eicher out of the scrum with the ball, number 42 for the Dragons. So they're going to mark it at the 41-yard line of Bedford, and an uncharacteristic miscue for the Bison to give up the football on a fumble. So it's first and ten. Now, can the Dragons turn this into points? They almost have to, Lou, because there's serious momentum right now on the Bedford side of things. It's only 16 seconds left to go here as, yep, they're going to throw that flag as well. They should have because jumping offside for Bedford that time, it was Josiah Wyant. And (laughs) when you're Josiah's size at 5'11", 210, when you make that little jump, there's no way you can pull yourself yeah, back from that. You're not hiding. And that was a good hard count by Hohenstein as well to draw them off. So now that makes a first down five with the ball marked at the 36-yard line. No time came off the clock because that's a dead ball lining up in the neutral zone foul. And it's Hohenstein handing the ball off. Hunter Smith falls forward over the 35-yard line, but... Not that far. They're going to mark him right at the 35. Let's give him a gain of one and a second down and four as the clock has finished its way out of the third quarter. We have three quarters in the books, and perhaps a surprise to some for sure, it is Bedford with the lead over Central. It is the Bison 14, the Dragons 7, back with the fourth and final quarter of tonight's PIAA AAA state championship first round game right after this on Mix 94.7. Hi, this is Ashley Miller, office manager and event coordinator for Park Hills Golf Club and Tavern 27. We are excited to be the host of your upcoming holiday events. Larger small gatherings can be accommodated in either our fireplace hearth room or our spacious banquet room. Choose from our extensive banquet menu or create a custom menu of your own. We are here to accommodate your every needs. Call 814-944-3313, extension 101, for more information. We look forward to seeing you here soon at Park Hills Golf Club and Tavern 27. 
seven. Dr. Stephen Yanishak and the staff at Bedford Regional Urology would like to take this moment to wish all the young men on the gridiron a safe and exciting football season. Dads and paps, don't forget to get your prostate checked. Early detection is the key and will help make sure you're still around to cheer on your children and grandchildren for many football seasons to come. Call 814-623-0552. That's 814-623-0552. And schedule your consultation today at their Bedford office or their new Altoona location, 2950 Fairway Drive. This is Mix 94.7. Beginning the fourth quarter with a handoff to Parker Gregg. He is able to get inside the 30-yard line to the 29. That gain is good for a central first down and a great way to start this fourth and final quarter, at least the scheduled final quarter. At this point, this could end up going to overtime. Lou, you never know. Now we're 12 minutes away, potentially, from the end of one of these teams' seasons. So here come the central Scarlet Dragons. Tell you one of the things, how many times have we seen Mercy Clock in the second half? That's not going to happen tonight. Scarlet Dragons trailing right now. Hohenstein looks one way, throws the other too tall for Hunter Smith. As that has been an ongoing thing for Jeff Hohenstein here in tonight's game as he gets all amped up and ends up throwing the ball too tall for his intended receiver. Big target out there at 6'2", Mr. Smith uh, on that far side flat area. So what are you saying? The name of the show is Mr. Smith goes to Montgomery Street or... What is it? Yeah, that would be a good one. (laughs) And it's a handoff by Hohenstein to Parker Gregg. He's going to be met for no gain. Boy, and I'll tell you, there's another thing after watching this team all season that you don't think you're going to say very often, that Parker Gregg carries the ball for no gain. He was brought down by Cooper Lingenfelder, a 6-foot, 225-pound senior. He's made some big, both, you know, sacks of Hohenstein and some stops on running plays. So they take him out of the game now, I guess, saying that they fully expect the Dragons to throw. Hohenstein, and he throws one sidearm, and it's down near the bottom of the turf, but it is scooped up by Ethan Eicher, and that is good for a central first down. That's That's a little Pat Mahomes for you. A little Jeff Hohenstein special with a sidearm sling into uh, Ethan Eicher, and he kept that from hitting the turf. I'll tell you what, you just think about every time you've seen Patrick Mahomes do that sidearm sling, and that's what we just saw. And as Central approaches the line, we get a whistle and a a stoppage of play signified by the officials. And I think one of the players there has an equipment malfunction on the helmet. Equipment issue. And coming into the game then is John Burkett for Bedford. Okay. Now we got everyone in with the proper equipment. Okay, first and 10. There's the handoff to Parker Gregg. He's trying the right side, unable to get down inside the 15. He stood up right at the 15 and driven back. They'll mark him down at the 16-yard line. That's going to be a gain of just two and a second down and eight now for the Dragons. And that was Swaim on the tackle uh, for the Bison. Different look here. They came out at the beginning. They, meaning the Scarlet Dragons, came out at the beginning of the second half and primarily using Hunter Smith as their feature back, thinking that a majority of the defense that was planned by Bedford was to go after Parker Gregg. Now they've gone back to Gregg, but he's still unable to gain the kind of yardage he's used to. Hohenstein, back to pass, bounces, throws. Eli Lingenfelder had it for a second. It's knocked out of his hands by Kevin Ressler. And, of course, the – and there's an injury on the play, and is that Eli Lingenfelder who's down? Yeah, Lingenfelder's down. So those two young men, Ressler and Lingenfelder, went up for the football, and nobody came down with it and coming down hard, perhaps on his shoulder there, was Eli Lingenfelder, a guy that impressed us from the beginning of the season. And he's just kind of laying still right now as they try to assess. Yep, he pops up, and now he starts walking toward the sideline. I'll tell you what, as, as tough a game as this has been physically, there have not been any real problems so far for either team physically. Now that we're aware of. Yeah, they're having, and they played a pretty clean game as well, as was noted by Coach at halftime. Uh, 
opportunity knocking here for Central with 9.32 left in the fourth quarter. They have quarter. to put this in at 14-7 to seven and that amount of time left to go. you got to even it up and then just give it a good head-to-head, knock it out of the park kind of approach to finishing this game off. Third down and eight. Hohenstein has Smith to his left and Greg to his right. Bounces around, throws, pass is completed to 10. Good turn up field. Leaning forward, it is Iker. And Iker is brought down at the six, and that is good for a central first down. First and goal. Ball Iker, marked at the six. Iker averaging 13 yards a carry coming into tonight's contest. He's a big target as well. 6'1, 211 pound wide receiver. So Iker. The end of his season's been pretty good, and there's a good sign as we see Eli Lingenfelder come back into the game off the sideline. So he only missed one play after not being, well, after being belted around out there by Kevin Ressler. It's Hohenstein. He's going to carry it himself, and he's in. Touchdown. Touchdown. Central ties it. Well, not yet. It is 13-14. Central needs to get that extra point to tie this thing up. And it's an official timeout signaled here. I'm not sure what that's all about. Did you see a flag come in at the end? I see no laundry. We might have another one of those equipment issues. Okay. Well, this has been the biggest change. What we just saw there has been the biggest change for Central here in the second half, and that was turning Jeff Hohenstein into one of the runners here in the second half. He was just a quarterback throwing the football in the first half. Uh, He's still a quarterback throwing the football here in the second half, but he's had uh, somewhere around, what, a half dozen carries or so here in the second half. He's got to be over 50 yards on the ground easy for the, the contest this evening. Smith in for the PAT. Point after by Hunter Smith to try to tie it. Spots good, kicks up, kick is good. Nice job. And that makes the score Central 14 and Bedford 14. So here we go. Let's oh, there's a flag on the point after, and it's a roughing the kicker penalty against or running into the kicker, don't know which, against Bedford. Yeah, and it's gonna be on, I believe, Swain walking. 902 left to go in the game. Score tied at 14. And those Central fans are over on the far side of the field, and they have now been awakened. <laughs> yeah, a little explanation given to Coach Baker, and we'll see. They're probably going to kick off with moving the ball up here, see what that penalty has to do here. Well, the back judge is – Standing with the ball at the usual kickoff position, the 40-yard line. Hunter Smith coming in that direction with a T. And there's been a number of explanations given as to where it is we go from here. And Bedford comes out onto the field. Still milling around the 45-yard line. Yep. Does, doesn't something have to happen they, here? They got to move the ball up or decline. Well, I don't know why you would decline the penalty. They're going to move them back. So yeah, giving Hunter Smith the opportunity to pooch one as they start to advance it up to the forty-five yard mm-hmm. line. Five yard penalty for that. So Smith will kick off from his own forty-five and try to pin Weber and Washington Bison. deep. As deep as he can. Special teams. How many times do we talk about their importance in a game? Hunter Smith, line drive, fielded by Washington at the 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. Gets over the 40, is wrapped up by both Hunter Smith and also coming over there to get a piece of the action was Ty Helsel as Helsel Really tackled the football, Lou. He was trying to rip that one away, but he couldn't get it off of Washington. So Bedford has great field position to start here. This drive after Central has just tied the game at 14. 
Yeah, we'll have to see if they can shut them down here and get the ball back. 8.53 left in the contest. We're all tied up at 14 apiece. From the 46, this drive starts. Washington in motion. That's a low snap and picked up by Swaim. He decides to run with it. Somewhat of a broken play with a tackle and excited about it is Ethan Eicher. It's going to be a gain of one and a second down and nine. Well, actually, it's a gain of a half yard, but statistically, you have to call that a gain of a yard and make it second and nine because they don't have protractors in the stat department. Good good tackle by Iker. They stopped him in his tracks there. As they say about AWS, stat that. Second down and nine. The central crowd is really being vocal over there in the far side of the field. This running play will go up to about the 49-yard line as carrying the football that time, Trenton Price. And Bedford he sticking, gets to the 50. Sticking to what got him here, the average 264 yards on the ground and only 108 yards in the air coming into tonight's contest. You're so. saying they're dancing with the one that brung them. Exactly. This all is right. reminiscent of what they've done all year long. They need to get to the 44 of Central. The Central fans are really cheering away here as Swain gets ready. Washington goes back behind him. Swain takes the snap. And Swaim almost was tackled there. And a pass goes over on the far side of the field. The defense by Jeff Hohenstein on a pass intended for Ethan Weber of Bedford. It's an incompletion, and nobody's going to go for it on fourth and six. Well, I shouldn't say nobody, but in this case, Mr. Steele, the head coach of Bedford, is not going to go for it. Devin Boyle is putting the pressure on Mercury Swaim. Fourth and six. So the... Dragons are set to be perhaps pinned somewhat deep in their own territory with 7.31 left to go in the game. Swain gets the punt away. It's a high end over end fielded by Lingenfelder at the 14-yard line, out over the 20, turns, goes upfield. He's out to the 25, the 30, the 40, the 45, and is eventually pulled down as he gets to the 50-yard line. And Mercury Swain, the punter, ends up being the guy that tackles and perhaps, dare I say, even a touchdown-saving tackle by Mercury Swain on Eli Lingenfelder. After seeing him laying there in the end zone, what, no more than about 10 minutes ago, Lou, and to see him return that ball like that, that's really good to see. There's a good swing of momentum right now. Central needs to sustain a drive here, play very, very open offensively and not turn the ball over and get something in the end zone. 7-16 left to go in the game. Tied at 14. We're at Holidaysburg for Central and Bedford in the PIAA AAA Championship Series. And that is Parker Gregg who gets down to the 45-yard line of Bedford. That'll be a gain of three. And that will make it a second down and seven. And Greg averages nine yards a carry coming into tonight's contest. And, and that offensive line starting to get some momentum here for the Scarlet Dragons. Second down and seven. Owen Stein, high snap, gets it down, makes a handoff. Parker Gray gets inside the 35, eventually brought down at the 33. They may give him the 32-yard line, and they do on that carry. Dragons ball, first and 10, Bedford 32. Offensive line has come to life. They're starting to bring some big holes up front, and Parker Gregg knows how to cut it north and south. All right. The tide has changed. The clock is running. 6.28 left to go, tied at 14. Handoff this time. And it's going to be Parker Gregg again. He'll get inside the 30 to the 29. It's a nice sustained drive here by the. I'm sorry, Scarlet it was Hunter Dragons. Smith. My Smith mistake. on the carry. Yeah. Yep. Had to check that as well. It's a gain of three and a second and seven. That's fine. This drive is playing out just the way you'd like it to if you're a fan of Central and maybe even the coaching staff of Central. Hohenstein. Quickly hands that one off to Parker Gregg. Gets inside the 25 and is still on his feet. Driving forward to about the 23-yard line, 
If he has that, he has the first down, but I think he's going to be about a yard short. Yeah, it's a nice sustained drive here by Central. They're gobbling the clock up, and they're making forward progress. Brings up a third and two, Dave. you got to get the pay dirt here. 32, or make that the 22-yard line is what they need for a first down. The ball's at the 24. It's going to be Hohenstein on the carry. Turns a corner. First down and more as he'll go out of bounds at about the 20. It's a good run by Hohenstein also to stop the clock. Now they can get a couple of plays called, get a quick breath of air. And, you know, the cold tonight, as we talked earlier, Dave, is not going to affect these young men. When you're playing, you're into the game, into the momentum. You don't feel that cold out there. Well, and especially in light of the fact that the wind is not a factor here tonight at all. The flag laying limp against the flagpole here in Hollidaysburg. Hohenstein hands the ball off. Parker Gregg gets inside the 15, brought down around the 10. I think he may have another first down. That could be a 10-yard gain on the carry for Parker Gregg. And when yep. you look out across the field, you see three linemen downfield, eight yards, making blocks, sustaining blocks. The offensive line has kicked it into gear right now for the Central Scarlet Dragons. Well, here's the situation. Central can get a first down. They don't have to go into the end zone. They would be about a half yard shy of the goal line if they do get that first down. Whatever it takes. 444 left to go. And there goes Hohenstein. Nice carry inside the five, brought down at about the four. Jeff Hohenstein has turned into maybe the feature running back here in the second half. Now he got a little skinny when he hit that line of scrimmage, turned sideways and kept lugging forward. So after a bit of concern for Central fans and coaches, now the team has kind of taken that slap in the face from Bedford and turned it into momentum, favoring Central. Hohenstein takes the snap, rolls to his right, cuts toward the end zone, and he makes it Touchdown. in! Touchdown! Jeff Hohenstein with a dive at the goal line gets in around the pylon and makes the score Central 20, Bedford 14. What a turnaround here. And he's hard to account for because you're so worried about those big offensive backs, those wide receivers. you got to account for Hohenstein. He ran to the wide side of the field for six on a four-yard gain. Oh, you know what, Lou? That's a part of their game that they have not had to use that often. And it makes it a – I mean, it's always been there, and we've seen it from time to time, but now it's actually something they can lean on. It's going to be the Dragons with a timeout called here before the point-after attempt. But I'll tell you what, Hohenstein has risen to the occasion, to be sure. Do want to thank our sponsors who are with us and have been so throughout the course of the season. And that group includes Bedford Regional Urology, Tavern 27 at Park Hills Golf Club, Coldwell Banker Town & Country Real Estate, Bob Pennington Broker Owner, West Central Equipment, J.P. Mortgage, McCoy's Lawn & Garden, Pacifico Bakery, Horvath Chemical & Supply, Long's Outpost, Dragon's Den Pizza, Proactive Sports, Roaring Spring, True Value, and Morrison's Co. First Federal Credit Union. Stay tuned, by the way, for the Bedford Regional Urology player of the game at the end of this one. Lou's scrolling through his scoreboard there to get something to tell us about. Looks what do you like have? Bishop Guilfoyle's up 28 nothing over Homer Center. Juniata Valley up over Portage, 21-7 in the Setting fourth Setting up quarter. a heck of a championship game, huh? Northern Juniata Valley Bedford. and BG. Northern Bedford bounces back. They're up 28-14 over Reynolds. All right. Gary Black and the crew in beautiful downtown Loisburg. Hunter Smith is in to attempt the point after out of the hold from Eli Lingenfelder. Hits the uh, goal post, and it deflects and does not go back in between them. It bounces into the end zone. So we talked about special teams and how important they are, and now here's one that has kept the game at a score of 20 to 14. So now Bedford can score and kick an extra point and win this thing and put that kind of a drive together. 407, man, couldn't ask about a better a better setup for Bedford than what just happened. I think you get your defense together here, and you say, boys, we need a three and out. Well, this is the season right and, here. And you're going to maybe see a blitz or a different package by Central to stop Mercury Swaim 
from breaking off tackle and getting a couple of first downs here for the Bison. Hunter Smith comes out and checks to make sure there are the appropriate number of players on the field. That's the least of all things you need at this point is to give Bedford any additional yardage that they don't have to earn. Keep in mind, Hunter Smith is only a sophomore. He's got two more years here for Central. It's a lot of uh, amazing things about the age of these athletes and how many of them we'll see again next year. Hunter Smith kicks it, line drive, starts to flip end over and taken at the 12, out over the 20, the 30, the 35, the 40, the 45, and midfield before he's driven out of bounds, and now Central's going to pay a price there. He went out of bounds, and there was still a hit that followed after he went out of bounds. He was Justin Arnold, and he got whacked over there on the Central sideline. That'll add 15 on the end of a beautiful kickoff run down to the Central 46. So that'll take things down to the 31-yard line. Wow. And that's not what Central had in mind here after taking the lead again in the ball game. They march it down to the 31. That's where this drive will start. And now the defense is being called upon for the Dragons to make an extremely big play and series here to stop the Bison. Mercury Swain is in the shotgun. Swain calling out the signals, making sure his receivers have heard what play they're running. And Swain gets ready to take the snap and... There is a whistle blowing because a timeout has been called by Kevin Steele, the head coach of the Bedford Bison. Hey, wants to get something organized here. They might have seen something. They're going to reset this offensive alignment, but defensively, Central has to come all out. They've got to put a blitz package in there. You need a couple of quick stops. they got to keep the ball out of the end zone. And this is one here where you saw that flag fly on the far side. And that's just the kind of thing that you do not want to see in the postseason. And it was bad enough that uh, if you're a Central fan or member of the Central coaching staff, it was bad enough that they got across midfield on the kickoff return, but then you gave them 15 more free ones after that. All right, timeout's over. Everybody's off the field, almost everybody. And now here we go. Play clock is rolling. 357. Swain to his favorite receiver, Maxwell Washington, turns it upfield, cuts inside the 15. He'll be brought down at the 10. It'll be a first down. And I think they're going to mark that right at the 10. So it's going to be a first and goal, I do believe. Yeah, Washington has got to be some type of track person. He just hit that outside and he was down. I mean, he was down the field quickly. Pass off to the right side, and Bedford, the only problem they have going on right now, but it's not a problem really, but they may score too quickly if that's a thing. Clock down to 333. Swain up under center. Washington with the move, and Swain is met immediately. Fumble. Fumbles the ball. Central has it. Unbelievable. Mercury Swain, Swain trying to pull any number of central players forward with him after he got to about the nine yard line. And wow, now Swain great. is holding his hands up on his head in disbelief of what has just happened. A turnover at the 10 yard line and central has to figure out a way to get a couple of first downs here with three twenty-three left to go in the game and drag this out so that they could win by six. Well, if we're to believe those rankings, we're watching the number one and number two AAA teams in the state doing battle here, and it's that kind of game. Hohenstein with a handoff. That one goes to Parker Gregg, and Gregg gets out over the 10, or does he? So I look at the side judge walking in right at the 10. Yeah, it's hard angle from where our purview is. Up there. That it is. In the birdcage. So timeout. Timeout called by Bedford. 
So now the Bison are down to one timeout remaining here till the end of the game. 318 left to go in it. And it's Central 20 and Bedford 14. What that's, a game, Lou. That's a good timeout for Bedford because, sure. again, they're trying to save time on the clock. Something even at the collegiate level we've seen recently, coaches not be able to do. Yep. Manage the clock for opportunity. And that's what Bedford needs. But right now, Central needs to take the time off the clock. It's second and nine. They need to get a first down, methodically move the ball down the field, be patient. But that offensive line comes into play right now. Can they get a first down for the for the Scarlet Dragons? i tell you one thing, as run slanted as the offense has become here, in the second half, it might be time for a pass play to try to open things up and maybe restore a little more confidence for Jeff Hohenstein going forward, well, assuming Central is going forward. If you get Devin Boyles on an eight yard slant run or a six yard slant run, he's six foot five. All you got to do is lay it up there for him to go get it. I'd take Langenfelder on 15 down the left, uh, make that the right sideline. How about that? Can we do that instead? <laughs> there is. Jeff Owenstein. He is going to hand it off, and that run is going nowhere to really amount to anything as the ball gets out to about the 13-yard line. And another timeout by Bedford. So they are now out of timeouts, and it is 20-14, to 14, and it is a third down and six. So... What do you draw up here, Lou, on third and six and wanting the first down? Because if you get the first down here now that Bedford's exhausted their timeouts, you're sitting pretty. I think you want to run something to the wide side of the field. The ball's cheated here to the near side. It's within the hash marks here. But you got a lot of room to the right of where we are. So maybe something off tackle, spring something, pick up that six, seven yards and keep it in bounds and keep the clock rolling. I mean, that's what I'm drawing up right now. Something off tackle. Show a little power move to the to the near side here, but go off tackle to the wide side. The big question is, what must be going through the mind of Mercury Swain right now to have that ball come out right at the 10-yard line on a play that he's run how many times this year? Hundreds. And never fumbled. <laughs> And never fumbled. Right, hundreds. Well, that's the pressure, and again, that's yeah. why they play the game. That, my friends, is playoff football. Maybe the biggest third down of the season now for Central with Jeff Owenstein. Set to take the snap out of the pistol. Gets it. He's going to run the ball. He gets it up over the 15, started to go toward the 20. He needed to get the 20-yard line to pick up the first down. He's going to be short. And... There's an injured player, injured Bedford player, that goes down on the play. It's going to be fourth and one, and there is no way that Dave Baker is going to do that riverboat gamble again because is this is darn, darn near as identical to what happened in the first half as you can get. I, I don't know. I'm not doing it, baby. I don't. I'm telling Hunter to no. get that leg out there and give that baby a ride. Yikes. Well, unfortunately, they did not take a lot of time off the clock. We still have 2.59 left in the contest. So, Injured player who pops right back up after the trainers go out and look at him. That was Josiah Wyant, a key member of the Bedford football team. And his friend went out there to help him, Cooper Lingenfelder. He's no small guy. If you need somebody to help get you up off the ground, Cooper's the guy you call. Yeah. <laughs> That's like calling for a tow truck. I was going to say that's that <laughs> tow truck mentality. <laughs> All right. Well, it is the Dragons up by six, 20 to 14, as time is dwindling away, but not quickly enough for central fans and coaches. Guys, we're just under three minutes at 2.59, and now the clock rolls. And it is off and running. It is fourth down, and they are unbelievably going to try for this. I'm just not taking this chance, but Dave Baker's going to. Hohenstein. They may be trying to get them to jump, and it sure looked like they did, but nothing called. 13 left on the play clock. Trying the hard count again. And six seconds left. 
on the play clock. Hohenstein, nope, turns and calls timeout right before the clock gets to zero. So they took all that time off. The clock got it down to 220, and now they will punt the ball. And I did not think that Dave Baker was going to actually try to make that. I, I understand what was going on there. We see that a lot. And sometimes as a fan, that gets a little frustrating because it's like, oh, man, they're going to do this, and you know they're not actually going to go for it. And they didn't. That was good strategy, though. That clock management comes into play. It's down to two. Yeah, you drained, what, 40 seconds? Or, uh, yeah, 40 seconds off the clock. Because of that injury stopping the clock. So they take 40 seconds off and get you a little bit closer to maybe moving on in the state championship tournament. So now on fourth down, you see... Hunter Smith standing back there. No, that is that isn't Hunter, is it? Or is it? Yeah. Okay. That three got a little twisted up there and kind of looked like a different number. There's the snap, and the kick is away. Good line drive kick. Hits at the fifty. Continues to roll. Started to go the wrong way for Central's liking, and is down at the forty-two yard line of Bedford. So, in essence, you could say the whole season comes down to this. Oh, well, that it does. The defense, for both of these teams. Defense for Central needs to step up, and the offense for Bedford just needs to do what got them here, and we'll see where the cards fall here in the next two, and a, two minutes and 12 seconds. As Lou said, 2-12 left to go to the end of this game. It is Central up by a score of 20-14. to 14. All the fans on the Central side are standing up. The Bedford fans are not. They're right in front of us. The Central fans are into it, to say the least. Swain, with a little flare pass to the side. It is complete to his favorite target here in the second half, Maxwell Washington. And rightfully so, Washington's been a heck of an offensive force here for the Bison. Stayed inbounds. That's one good thing Central did. And now Bedford is just kind of taking their time here, not something that they have the luxury to do as the clock is now down to a minute 45 left to go. Swain in the shotgun. Here comes a blitz. And getting away from it is Swain. Still looking for a target. He's hit as he throws, and that's going to be incomplete. Hit him just at the right time. And the pass was intended out there for Ethan Weber. And they hit him on the side, and that just threw that pass in a direction that well, Mercury Swain did not want it to go. It sets up a third down and seven. Ethan Eicher leading the defensive pressure there from a blitz. Now that was a great blitz. That inside linebacker position. So you betcha. Bedford in no hurry. I don't understand this at all. Well, the clock is stopped on the pass incompletion, so minute 35 left to go. And let's see what they come up with. The fans over on the central side are going crazy. It's Swain making a pass. Too tall. For Maxwell Washington off his fingertips and incomplete. And the fans on the central side of the field continue to go bananas. It is fourth down. And now Bedford's whole season is going to come down to this play. Clock stopping on the incompletion, a minute 31, plenty of time actually, if you utilize it well. But this is it. This is fourth down. You got to get the first down first before you can think about how you're going to utilize that clock and whatever's left on it. And you have no timeouts left in the contest. Fourth down. Maxwell Washington in motion. Swain incomplete. He threw the pass for Kevin Ressler. And I thought he threw it in a spot where Ressler could have caught it. And Mercury Swain for the second time in tonight's game is left standing in the middle of the field with both of his hands on his helmet in disbelief of what just happened, the same pose that he had when he fumbled the football at the central 10-yard line. He has it again on this incomplete pass intended for Kevin Ressler, and that all but salts it away. It'll be first and 10 central ball, and the Bedford fans get up and start running for the exit. Yeah, this is like nothing I've seen here for a long time. 128 left in the contest. No timeouts for either team as Central just exercised their last timeout. 
They so need. neither team has any left. So don't uh, Wendy's. Don't worry. No one's coming for Frosties tonight. <laughs> well, it's a frosty night for Frosties, so we'll just leave it at that. Hey, I'll take one if somebody's <laughs> going to give me one. I'll you know I'll take one. Back in the day, my friend. Back in the day. All right, first and ten with the ball at the forty-five of Bedford, and I mean you can stand here and you can say it. Stranger things have happened, but at this particular juncture. Uh, you know, all that Central has to do is keep the ball in the middle of the field, protect it, and, you know, I I, I don't know. Let's see. You get 40 seconds on the play clock. Three would be 120. You could darn, you can victory formation this out, couldn't you? You, you could. I would yeah. run one offensive play to see if we can get some yardage, though, first, because then the clock's going to continue to run. Well, Hohenstein is coming up under center. Let's see what he does with the ball. Nope, it is victory it's formation. Victory formation. They're going to let it run. So, they'll mark him back at the 47. That'll be a loss of one. Second and 11. And the Bedford fans continue to evacuate the area. Down to a minute 10. What a game. Yeah, it's how, they, it's how they draw it up. Defensive struggle on both sides, keeping these gangs out of the end zone. And this is one of the lowest point totals for Central all year. Just kind of amazing. Not what I expected for this game, but who am I? It's the victory formation kneeled down by Jeff Owenstein as we inch ever closer. And, and we're going to have to get one more snap. Um, Couple second difference. Nope, they repump. No. They repump the game or the play clock. It's sitting there at forty, so this is over. The Central Dragons are moving on in the PIAA Class AAA State Tournament, winning their first round contest in come from behind fashion in the second half. The final score here at Holidaysburg tonight is Central twenty. And Bedford, 14, two teams, number one and two, according to Max Preps in AAA in Pennsylvania. And what an effort and the kind of game you'd expect to see between number one and number two in the end. Yeah, it was a great game in the end. A lot of good sportsmanship here as we wound down in the final moments. As you said, our score, 2014, the Central Scarlet Dragons will advance. So they're into the second round. And uh, there'll be one more after that. And if you win that one, if you continue to win, you'll find yourself in Hershey there in the beginning of December. I want to thank our sponsors of tonight's game. That group includes Bedford Regional Urology, Tavern 27 at Park Hills Golf Club, Coldwell Banker, Town & Country Real Estate, Bob Pennington Broker Owner, West Central Equipment, J.P. Mortgage, McCoy's Lawn & Garden, Pacifico Bakery, Horvath Chemical & Supply, Long's Outpost, Dragon's Dip Pizza, Proactive Sports, Roaring Spring, True Value, and Morrison's Cove, First Federal Credit Union. Stay tuned. Coming up, we will bring you the Bedford Regional Urology Player of the Game. Bedford Regional Urology, proud to recognize the efforts of our outstanding area athletes. The Bedford Regional Urology Play of the Game, Player of the Game, that is, coming up right after we take this time out. A win for Central. They're moving on. They win it 20-14. to 14. Back after this on Mix 94.7. 